It's to go away, of course, here at Hamden because it's a, a day of two big matches, not only Scotland and Japan, but also, of course, the Tenant Scottish Cup final here at Hamden. Hearts against Gretna. We're looking forward to that a little bit later in the afternoon. But let's get the reaction of uh, Pat and Gordon to the first 45 minutes in, in Japan. What's your, your feelings, Pat? We've done pretty well, I think, really. Yeah, certainly started off, got forward a few times, but as the, as the half is worn on, we'll get pushed back and pushed back. But really, I mean, that's what Walter wanted to do, to be hard to beat. So he'd probably be delighted with that, hanging on with our fingernails the last few minutes or so. But uh, I think I'd be quite happy. And remember, this is two games in two days, so they will be a bit tired. That, that is a big factor, Gordon. You pointed that out on Thursday, of course. The fact it's asking a lot, to, especially after the performance on Thursday, because they gave everything. Absolutely. The Japanese have got a strong team, and they had extra two days rest. Obviously, they played Bulgaria on Tuesday. And uh, I think that, that we've recognised that in advance and Scotland have set out basically to be a very tight performance. But we haven't got past the ball as well and created the chances that, that we did on Thursday. We're, we're not really getting it going in the, the attacking sense. And as the first half was wearing on there, Japan started to create chances. We're ridden their luck a little bit too at this moment in time. So I think we've got to be quite fortunate and be quite happy to be sitting at 0-0 at the moment. Well, we've set up really to, to play a counter-attacking game, obviously, the 4-5-1 sort of formation, which you know becomes a more offensive formation when we've got the ball. And it, it works well, doesn't it? I mean, you've a good example here. Well, it's a 5-4-1 it is, Doogie Boo. Sorry, 5-4-1. Yeah, yeah. yeah. three centre-backs. Mm -hmm. And you can just see our shape there. The, the only difference is, look out, we've, all the players have got back. The midfield four are already tucked across. So you can see McFadden, his own up front. And as it runs on, we can just see that, the, that we're giving very little space away, but we're playing very deep. And that, that's one of the problems. We're, we're actually decided that Japan are a danger. And there was, was Fletcher. He did that a lot in the first half, actually. Just got the little challenge in. And we see it again here, just getting the tackle in, winning the ball in those areas. And we, we get away with it in that occasion too. And we get a little break I forward. Think, I think God knows that is important. They play a lot of balls into that little hole there, don't they? Yes. Just behind the front two. That's where they want to play. They've got good quality players such as Ono and Endo that like to get the ball in there and use that space. But that's, of course, if there's space there. And most of the time, Fletcher's sussing it and he's getting in there. On this occasion, I think that's Caldwell there. They've got in and they've got in and they've nipped in and they've closed down. But so the Japanese, at, really, they, they've exactly. not enjoyed this. They, they've hated the fact that there hasn't been space Look there. Look at the number of players we've got back there, though. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. We've got everybody, everybody behind the ball at an edge of a box. And at times, that is definitely playing a defensive game. I, I don't think Walter Smith would quite want to have us playing it as deep as that. Mm. Maybe try and push the game up a little bit because the more we play that deep, the more chance they've got having little flicks on the edge of the box and creating chances, which we'll see in yeah. a second. That's exactly what they were yeah. doing. Ono is particularly good at that, isn't he? But when Very we've got the ball, that, that 5-4-1... Teal and McCullough to then start to get forward. It becomes a more attacking formation. So there's a, there's a lot of onus on, on these two in particular. And then that they've done a job. I think Gary Teal down that right-hand side is always a threat, Pat. He is. Um, I think he came on to a game against Bulgaria the other day, but uh, he's looking stronger as he's come on. And he does, if, funnily enough, the way he gets the ball in, he's actually facing directly forwards. He's not angled himself, his body in towards the goal to look for a player. It doesn't worry about it, it just gets the ball in. Look, you don't think he's got the opportunity to get the ball in. This time he doesn't, he plays it back, you know. That doesn't matter as long as he holds the ball up. The good thing he's got pace and strength for this level of football, uh, Gary Teal. Mm -hmm. And obviously at a later stage in the game, you might see Chris Burke coming on again as he, as he did and came on very well in the game on Thursday. So, so Teal's done a, a good job, as I say. He's, he's got the ability and pace and work rate you know, to play at this level. Puts in a good ball there. Phil was given against McCullough. Most of our attacks, though, why we're showing this is that most of everything's been down the right side, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Naismith has got one ball in Philip. But look, he gets himself where he crosses the ball. I find that very strange. He's actually at the line, but he's actually facing directly that way as opposed to slightly in towards the goals. Mm. And it's quite unusual and it's difficult to do that. Certain players are capable of doing that and it's a real skill. Uh -huh. um, and Trevor Brooks makes it harder for the defender as well, doesn't it? Yeah. The defender doesn't think he's going to be able to do it. So mm. it's a good trick though. The difficulty is your forward coming in has to know that you're going to wait, wait to the last second. But no, he's done a great job and I think bringing it around to the fact that every midfielder in the Scotland team has got one hell of a job to do. They have to get forward when they can and they also have to get back and they have to get back deeper and deeper as Gordon was saying there as the game's going on. So yeah, it's a hard shift. It's two games and two days after a long uh, flight over there. But the willingness is there and isn't it great to see that willingness? Yeah, it certainly is. Japan, of course, going to the World Cup. They're ranked 17th in the FIFA ranking. They're a good side, even though they're missing today most of their, their Europe or all of their European-based players. And they definitely carry a threat going forward. Well, there, there was an example of, of the back five sort of stepping off and the midfield were closing down there and that's 
when you start to get balls played into those little holes, that's when the midfield start to drop back as well. So I think it, I think it's the defensive lads actually who are playing maybe a little bit too deep. But that was a great strike there, I have to say that from uh, Kaji. What a fantastic effort that was on his left foot. And uh, I think, you know, Alexander's performed very well over these two games, but he had no chance with that one if that was on target. Yeah, what I was noticing at that point in the game is I think the Japanese had sussed that they weren't going to get through in the little holes, so they were shooting from further out. And I'm thinking, well, fair enough, you know, if, if you're a good enough goalkeeper, if it was Craig Gordon in there, you're thinking, fair enough. But, you know, players will get tired and then little bits of holes will open up and that becomes a danger. But see that defending there, and again, that shows a great attitude as well. We'll talk about that in a minute, because that back heel by Shinji Ono is fantastic. Funny enough, I was actually saying oh no when he actually got the ball. <laughs> so look at, look at this, Twinkle this is going to go. That's <laughs> lovely skill. He should have scored actually, to be he honest. Have, he should yeah. just have tucked that away, but that, that, that's when we're bringing the luck in those scenarios. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just I, that one little piece of magic yeah. and suddenly it all opens up and he's got all the space in the world. How many Wonderful. players are actually have got the, the calmness to slow down in that situation? Most players panic, you know, but good players, good goal scorers, six yards out, actually their brain slows down, they slow down and they do the right thing. But watching Ono doing that, I know he's a good player, but there's a little bit of Zico in there as well. I think he's learned <laughs> off the top, man. <laughs> And uh, as for Scotland's goal threat, well, uh, of course, Chris Boyd not 100% fit. We saw that when he came off on Thursday. So James McFadden's playing the, the sort of lone striker role, which he's not really the ideal man for, I don't think. Yeah, is it? Well, we see what James is very good at there. You know, he gets the ball, he's close to, we were chatting about this before, Doug, he runs with the ball so close to his feet, he's almost impossible to tackle. He, again, he's, he's got the willingness to get up there, but I don't think he's getting as much support and he isn't getting into as many dangerous areas as, uh, as Chris Boyd was. And, it's, it's painful to do it, but if it's a direct comparison between the two. Now, he gets into the right position here, which is very similar to the position he scored against Bulgaria, mm. which was a fantastic touch. But I think it's a very tough one for him. But I think he's more willing to do the individual thing, whereas Chris Boyd up front is more willing to, to combine with other players. Mm. Chris Boyd's more liable to hold it up and allow other players to come into the game, whereas James McFadden will turn with the ball and start running, and sometimes he leaves the rest of his teammates behind. Mm. So if he doesn't actually beat MD, he loses possession and that's yeah. the difference between it's yeah. two different styles of play yeah and, and I sense he, he's the higher risk option McFadden isn't he I mean he'll, he'll lose your possession two times out of four and do something brilliant the other two hopefully yeah exactly Mc Boyd's a different kind of player yeah. isn't he yeah. one of those ones might lose to, lead to a goal the thing I would say about uh, James McFadden is I don't think he's an out and out up front on his own player I think Chris Boyd can be he can play point as often as you like James will do it and he'll run his legs into the ground for you but in actual fact his best position with the qualities he's got is coming from slightly deeper and uh, the fact that we've actually got a couple of options at the moment is wonderful 0-0 <laughs> no, no, at half time and uh, Sayatama then that will suit Scotland very well we could win a trophy 45 minutes or there's something to look forward to back live of course for the second half but here at Hamden we're looking forward to the tenant Scott that's good news as well and a 5-1 goal difference of a great Bulgarian second place and the host nation without a win as they dart off, head off to the World Cup in Japan and uh, well you can say what you like about the calibre of the, the opposition but uh, it's a trophy and two very good Scottish performances Gordon Yeah we should be delighted we played a lot better on, on Thursday no mm -hmm. question of that but the thing was that uh, the, the team were fresher then they'd had the journey but the players having to play two days later against the home nation as well I think they've got to be delighted and, and you can say what you like about the trophy you can devalue it whatever you want it's a wee bit we've got to be, think it's equivalent of the English celebrating the ashes they only <laughs> have to they only have to play against one other team we've, we've had oh, to you beat, can answer the letters on that one we've yeah. had to beat two <laughs> we've had to beat two teams to win this or at least play against two teams so I think we should be quite happy and, and, and proud of what they've achieved yeah and as you made the point earlier Pat, a system that hopefully will serve as well in, in, the, in the Euro 08 mm. qualifiers and also some players that I'm sure will have impressed Walter Smith. Yeah, I think you'll look through that side now. And players have come on maybe quicker. I mean, uh, but it, sorry, <laughs> Bucks, he just came in at the end here and actually done a lot better than we all expected him to do so early. So he's a big help. But Boyd, he has to be the big find. You would not fear putting him in against anyone now. So that's a great thing for him. But again, defensively, that has been my concern with Scotland for a while. I think midfield to front, we've, we've looked not too bad, quite capable. But defensively, I think we've maybe been a bit light and maybe ageing a little bit. But he's got younger players in there. There's Caldwell, there's Anderson as well. He's actually come in and played quite well today. So, yeah, those things have worked quite well. So it's, it's, it's all looking fairly all positive. Not getting 
too carried away with it. They are two decent teams. It will help our coefficient, which is great. Uh, well, our uh, FIFA standings, I think, more importantly. Um, we're so it gets a wee bit embarrassing after a while. But beating two teams that are above us, that will drag us up a little bit again. And I think what I would like to say at various times, you know, we started down there, look where I've taken us now, and that will give everyone a lift. Of course it will. And uh, although Japan certainly had the, the better chances during the match, Scotland could very well have scored with a lovely move, in fact. And uh, could it again to Chris Boyd. They say he's only a goal scorer, Gordon, but what a lovely little back heel here. Absolutely. I, I think people should take note of this. This is tremendous vision. And, and, and I'll give Gavin Ray credit there. It's slightly behind him. Mm. It's not in front of him to go and hit. I, I, he can't really be that critical because you watch that he's involved in the move as well he makes a great run Chris Boyd knows there looks just behind it he can't quite get a, a no. proper strike on it but that was a good move best move of the second half we weren't doing that enough in the first half and I think uh, Chris Boyd coming on just helped a wee bit up front in terms of holding the ball up and, and allowing Scotland to get out yeah, well, we certainly look forward to seeing Scotland presented with uh, the trophy, the Kieran Cup, uh, the Kieran Corporation, uh, in fact, co-founded by a Scotsman from Fraserburgh more than 100 years ago. That's uh, Mr Cato, who's the president of the Kieran Corporation, uh, presenting the trophy to David Weir. And, uh, well, there's a few quid for the boys for tonight as well. That's very nice. I believe they do get a couple of cases of the sponsor's product, and, well, they've deserved it at the end of a long, hard season. So that's a nice way to start our big day of football here on, uh, on BBC Scotland with uh, Scotland winning a trophy. However, we don't want to lose you and uh, the cup final this afternoon is not available for digital satellite viewers, very importantly. So if you are viewing in Scotland and you want to see live coverage of the big match, then you have to retune now to BBC One Scotland on your analogue terrestrial television receiver. The programme's also available in Scotland on Freeview and cable services.